Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus. And check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4. As well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Bangle again here coming back at you with another video. Today we are back on Madden NFL 19 franchise mode for a realistic rebuild of the San Francisco 49ers. Clearly their season has not been what they expected it to be. Jimmy Garoppolo got injured early, tore his ACL when he refused to go out of bounds for whatever reason, looking like me using Colby Spencer in my Ozark State Dynasty on NCAA 14 here on the channel. But we are going to try and realistically rebuild this 49ers team. I did a fantasy style earlier in the year. You can check that out. It's in the rebuilding playlist that all these are in on my channel. So if you want to catch up on every rebuild that I've done, that's a good spot to find it. And uh, yeah, updates on Twitter. Definitely tweet me. It's the best spot. Uh, make sure to follow me, twitter.com slash Designs. All links are in the description, including the live streams on Twitch, all that. But let's go ahead, dive into the team here, and uh, maybe start to see where some of these flaws are and how to make them better. 3-10 and 10 here in Week 15. Not fantastic. Although, I will say, the 49ers beat the Seahawks today as I record this, so I guess good for them. They picked up their fourth win to advance to 4-10. and 10. We're going to go ahead and act as if injuries aren't on. And we got our boy here, Jimmy Jesus, back at the helm. 26 years old, star development. I think we should be able to work with him as our QB. I really do. Of course, Kyle Juszczyk, Matt Breida, Jarek McKinnon is a really nice duo in the backfield. Obviously, Alfred Morris and Raheem Mostert as well. And then a flash Goodwin, Dante Pettis, Pierre Garçon. Uh, Dante, I said Dante Pettis? I think I did. Uh, Trent Taylor, Kendrick Bourne in here as well. And then the offensive line, we got Joe Staley, Lakin Tomlinson, Weston Richburg, uh, Matt McGlinchey, who's had an incredible season at right guard, uh, and then Mike Person, 30 years old out of Montana State. We're going to probably look to get better than him. And the beast that is George Kittle has had such an amazing season so far in only his second year. He has been incredible. Played like the best tight end in the NFL, honestly. Uh, you can certainly make an argument to say he is one of the top three guys in the entire league right now and it's close obviously there are gonna be some guys that think Zach Ertz is the best something Travis Kelsey stump something Gronk even though he's had kind of a down year but George Kittle's played up there with all of them tremendous tremendous player he is our best player on offense I think pretty clearly right now and then when we get over to the defense side of the ball it is a little bit worse it really is of course we got Fred Warner he's had a very good rookie season out of BYU He's been solid. He has good numbers as well. We'll try to build around him. People got really mad when I traded him in my fantasy style, which is, it's fantasy style, man. The team's going to change a lot. Realistic style, we're obviously going to rock with him in the middle linebacker. Malcolm Smith has got to go. I'm not even sure who this is. Mark? Ziocha? And Ziocha? I don't, I don't know how to say that. I'm going to be honest. Brock Coyle's in here as well. Elijah Lee, who plays quite a bit from what I can see. Got Jaquiski Tart, who's a beast out of Sanford. I feel like they always say, like, Jaquaski, And I'm like, just look at it. There's no way that's Jaquaski. He's good when he's healthy. Adrian Colbert's also pretty solid at free safety. Anton Axum. And then a cornerback, Richard Sherman, still, you know, a top guy in this league. Great zone press corner. Uh, can kind of do it all. Decent man abilities as well. And then Kwan Williams, Jimmy Ward, Akella Witherspoon. Kind of a weak cornerback group outside of Richard Sherman. A Keller Witherspoon, in my opinion, being the second best of the bunch, but currently listed as the fourth best. And then the defensive line is kind of a disaster. DeForest Buckner is amazing. Like, he is amazing. So, so good. And still also so young. But outside of that, Sheldon Day is not very good, in my opinion. Neither is Earl Mitchell. Eric Armstead has always been average. Cassius Marsh actually plays okay. Ronald Blair is okay. Solomon Thomas isn't living up to top five hype at all. I don't know what we're going to do with him. We're going to start him, but he better start progressing. That's all I can say from that regard. We are going to load in my 2019 NFL draft class, which you guys can download if you use the PS4. It is Bengal 2019 draft. We are already mathematically eliminated from playoff contention, so we're just going to simulate straight to the offseason, not worry about anything else. We will see who won the Super Bowl. And it was the Chargers over the Cowboys, 37-27. If they get hot at the right times, um, I, that wouldn't even shock me that much. I thought the Cowboys were not a great team, but they've started to pick up offensively. Their defense has been incredible. If their offense picks it up, I mean, could they beat a team like the Rams or the Bears in the NFC? I think given 
you know, the right situation, that home field advantage against some of those teams. Not the Rams or the the Bears because they're both going to win their division, but a team like that, maybe they could beat them because the Cowboys could very easily win the division. But, you know, that is a story for another day. What do we want to do here? Bring back probably both these guys. Robbie Gold's still good. Bradley Pinion, in my opinion, still pretty good as well. Of course, we saw a lot of them in a 49ers franchise, if you watch my Madden 18 series. Bradley Pinion is back, and I'm sure Robbie Gold will re-sign as well. I want that to be more than one year. We'll keep him until you're 40. Pretty big contract for a punter, but Robbie Gold returns as well. And I will see you guys for free agency. Oh, crazy. Here we are. Le'Veon Bell is here. I have no interest. However, LaMarcus Joyner is a player I have a lot of interest in. A lot. We'd steal him from a division rival in the Los Angeles Rams. He's a good safety. Decently aged, I guess you could say, at 28. He's also versatile enough to play cornerback and free safety. Very low block shed on him. This is someone I'd be interested in signing. I don't want to really go above this, though. It's 69.9. Nice. And it's 124 points. That doesn't get up to the Dolphins' insane offer. I wouldn't want to offer much more than that, and I'm not really interested in anybody else. Like Trevor Williams, obviously, but... And I feel like we signed him a lot at the start and haven't really since. He's always in free agency. He's young. He has quick development. He fits a need. I might have to. He's also cheap, which is a big thing for me. Very cheap player. So I did offer those contracts. I'd love to get LaMarcus Joyner, but I just don't want to offer much more than what we gave him. And he actually accepts, and he joins. All right. So LaMarcus Joyner is the newest member of the San Francisco 49ers. He joins Trevor Williams. And yeah, welcome to San Francisco. Richard Sherman has started to regress a little bit. Still has his uh, confidence going. He also is down to quick development, which I guess doesn't really matter that much now that he's 30. All right, we need to have a good draft. What position do I need here? Middle linebacker is a big one. Any linebacker, really. Edge rusher and an offense. We need offensive line. Joe Staley retired. Eh, wide receiver wouldn't hurt, but it's not a huge need. It's really offensive line, linebacker, and that's it for right now. Offensive line and linebacker. I'll see you guys at the draft. We're going to have a really, really good pick, and that is at number five overall. Do we start to win games? Come on, man. Bills pick at number one. They take Devin White, a player I was very much interested in drafting. The Raiders go Nick Bosa. Cardinals take A.J. Brown out of Ole Miss. They go receiver. Greedy Williams to the Jets, and we now are on the board at number five. I'm going to go Jonah Williams here. I know it's kind of a boring pick offensive line, but he is our Joe Staley replacement. We need one badly. He will fit the bill very nicely. 80 overall, superstar development. 89 strength, 77 run block, 83 pass block. The all-SEC player out of Alabama. Welcome all the way across country to San Francisco. Albert Okwa Ibanam to the Colts. Good thing we don't need a tight end. Byron Murphy's here. We could use a third cornerback. Marquise Brown. Rashawn Gary is falling all the way here. We could play him as an edge rusher very easily. I like him more on the inside, but I'm not sure if he's going to play that in the NFL. I think he would translate very well to a 3-4 defensive end or 4-3 defensive tackle. Cornerback or edge rusher? I know we need an edge rusher. Uh, but is that Rashawn Gary, though? I know he has really good development in this based on uh, his upside. Do we take Byron Murphy? I think we're going to go edge rusher here. Rashawn Gary, welcome to the 49ers. 79 overall, superstar development. It's hard to pass up on. He can probably play the edge. Again, I really do like his profile as an inside interior defender. But uh, he couldn't play edge. Played a lot of that at Michigan. Ben Burke Irvin goes to the Jets. Hollywood Brown still here. I don't know why he keeps falling every single time. And the quarterbacks always fall as well. Jonathan Abrams here. Let's take Debo. 
never take Debo Samuel. Because Hollywood Brown's usually on the board, but he's 75 overall with quick development. Decent enough speed, good route running, decent catching. Overall, just a very decent player. Debo's pretty good, too. Like him a lot at South Carolina. And he is now also actually coming fully across country from South Carolina to California. As Sam Mustafer goes to the Jets. So Amani Oruari out of Penn State. Decent cornerback, 74 overall, normal development. He will join a crowded room, but a lot of those guys I'm looking to move on from. So I'm more than okay with taking him and then sacrificing Jimmy Ward along the line. Sacrificing Kwan Williams or a Keller Witherspoon. I think he's probably better than all of them right now. Jake Browning to the Saints. He'll probably win MVP over the course of this thing. We'll go Garrick Brumfield out of LSU. 68 overall. We're not going to find much value here very late in the draft. Although he does have really high pass block. Not someone that's going to come in and play. And that was our last pick of the draft. We had a pretty good draft for Sean Gary, Jonah Williams. I mean, those are uh, two first-round caliber players. Debo Samuel is someone that could have touched there. It was good value in the third round. And Amani Oruwari. Or or I'll figure it out eventually. Um, sure, someone will tell me in the comments. It was a good value draft for sure. This is the team for season number two. I mean, we're in a good spot. I think the additions we've made to the the roster have been good. I'm probably gonna cut Kawan Williams. Uh. Never mind. Uh, that's not good for Cap. A Keller Witherspoon might be... A Kello might be an impending free agent. Doesn't really make any sense to cut him. I don't want Kawhi and Williams here, I think, is the bottom line. Which means that you now, without fitting the profile at all, play strong safety. All right, now we have the cornerbacks I want there. Kawan Williams is a 77 overall. I mean, we could move Adrian Colbert up to play linebacker. Just because um, he does have decent hit power, pursuit. Tackle's real low. Doesn't really fit the profile that well. Jaquiski Tart probably would more, but we're not looking for one. So, I mean, I guess we'll keep him where we are. Or where they are. Need a better defensive tackle. Which means that Eric Armstead's going to slide in. Solomon Thomas will go play left end. Alright, so this is actually the team. Most of the stuff about the team most of the things are the exact same most there are changes here and there sean gary left end solomon thomas right end and then a specialist uh it'll be the same for rush players and then i want to play debo samuel as our slot receiver and then offensively nothing else changes except for uh i need debo to get more touches i don't want pierre garçon to get way way less so I'm going to move Debo up over Pierre Garçon. I'm going to move Dante Pettis up over Debo Samuel. And we are good to go. We're golden. And I will see you guys at the midseason mark. We are 2-6 and six at the midseason mark. Not doing too well. Not at all. But, I mean, what did you expect? The team is still not good. We're improving. We're just not there. These are how the upgrades look. Rashawn Gary is going to upgrade really fast. Adrian Colbert is apparently playing a lot. I'm not sure why. Why would he have two skill points? What would he be doing? Is he playing in specialists? No. Where? Well, I mean, yeah, no. Where would he be playing? He's the backup free safety. Why would you be playing a lot? I mean, I don't have a problem with it. He's like a decent player. But he's playing a lot. Why? Do we run a lot of dime or something? I have no idea. Regardless of that, DeForest Buckner will be a free agent at the end of the year. Need to bring him back. Matt Breida as well. Eric Armstead, who I moved inside a defensive tackle. Those top three guys absolutely need to resign. All right, all three have resigned. That's good. Keeping a good young core here. Eric Armstead, DeForest Buckner, both 25. And Matt Breida, only 24 years old. He'll be our bell cow running back for the foreseeable future. Obviously, we have Jarek McKinnon as well. He's number two. We need a true number one receiver, in my opinion. I'm not sure that we have one. Dante Pettis could become that guy, but we don't have one right now. Marquise Goodwin 
is a slot receiver in my opinion. We need to get better on defense though. We're not going to make the playoffs, but I will tell you I am certainly looking for upgrades at linebacker. Fred Warner will work at right outside linebacker. He's not going to work at inside for the course of this rebuild, I can guarantee you. The Rams have beat the Browns 35-14 in Super Bowl 54. Have a few upgrade points. Jimmy Garoppolo is not improving at all. I'm not sure that he's gotten a point over the entire course of this thing, and he's not even playing particularly well. The 43rd ranked passer rating in the NFL. That's bad. Although his numbers aren't particularly terrible, just low touchdowns. Matt Breida wasn't amazing. Yard per carry is how I judge how well a player played, and he didn't. George Kittle was fantastic. As far as blocking goes, Jonah Williams let up a sack a game. Trevor Williams led our team in tackles somehow. And then as far as tackles for loss, DeForest Buckner was killing it, as was Eric Armstead. Quarterback sack seven for DeForest Buckner, killing it on the inside. Three interceptions for Richard Sherman led the team. Our defense is bad, too. Now, you know, I understand it. It's not a great team. I'm not sure why a lot of our backups are playing as much as they are. I really don't understand that. We had the 31st defense in the NFL. Ezekiel Elliott wins MVP. Let's see. What team am I doing? The Niners. Our NFC Office Player of the Year is Ezekiel Elliott. How do I always get to the screen? I forget who I'm doing. It's like a little bit concerning as Deion Jones wins Defensive Player of the Year. No 49ers. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Justin Herbert with the Giants. Debo at number four. No other 49ers. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Devin Bush. DeAndre Baker at number two. What a draft for the Lions. Good on them. Any 49ers? Yep. It's really... Amani Oruwari at uh, Defensive Rookie of the Year, but no Rashawn Gary? A little bit surprising. Yannick Ngakwe is here. That's very tempting to me. He looks like he'd be pretty cheap right now. Only the Broncos going after him. Demarius Randall's here as well as LaMarcus Joyner is regressing, but it'd be like signing the same exact player. Uh, I'm obviously not going to do that. I'm not really looking for a safety, but if a good one is available, I might draft one because, like a Grant Delpit, for example. Because LaMarcus Joyner is a guy that play, uh, could play cornerback very easily. We are going to go after Yannick Ngakwe. I'm pretty much done with the with the Solomon Thomas experiment, I'm going to be honest. I'm losing patience. Shaq Thompson rejected our contract, but Yannick Ngakwe accepted. He also fits the scheme at right end perfectly, so I like that a lot. And the defensive line now is finished. Solomon Thomas is a player that I am going to upgrade to 77 overall, and I'm going to put him on the trade block. And I won't get an offer in the offseason, which is kind of annoying. I wish that I would. I'm probably not going to get an offer. It doesn't generally work like that. Need to improve at linebacker. That's the spot. Linebacker. Right, left, middle. Fred Warner's fine. Um, but we need the other spots. Richard Sherman is regressing. We could use a cornerback. The team is falling apart a little bit here before I could even get it going. We have a lot of needs. A lot of needs. We really do. Time for the 2020 NFL Draft. We pick at number four overall as Tua goes to New York to become a New York Jet. Well, East Rutherford, New Jersey. I get that. I know. Walker Little. Trey Smith out of Tennessee to the Raiders. And we're on the clock. Number four. I'm going to go Patty Fisher here at our Northwestern. Only a 76 overall, but star development is good. That will slide in nicely at maybe even middle linebacker. I'm not sure. Speed isn't great, but tackle, block, shed, hit, power, all are. Decent power moves as well. He translates as an outside linebacker, so we will move him out there. Ooh, and Nate Herbig's available here in the second round. Need a first-round caliber guard. 76 overall, star development. That will come in and start immediately. That is big. Our offensive line is bad. He helps out significantly. Jalen Thompson here's first round projected. Hybrid player could probably be useful for us. We'll take him. 74 overall quick. Not that great. Third round tackle here. Robert Hainsey. 71 overall quick development. That's going to be the end of the draft here. Uh, we didn't really hit it out of the park with any superstar guys, but I don't know this draft class. I don't know who's going to be good, obviously. You got to take players. You got to take those risks, take those chances to get rewarded. And we did okay. Certainly not the best draft I've ever had. 
probably not the worst. I don't know. I can't say certainly. I've, I usually draft pretty well. But these, uh, these custom draft classes throw me for a loop sometimes. We did all right. Filled needs, and I think that's what counts. Fred Warner is an 80 overall right outside linebacker. Patty Fisher is a 79 overall outside linebacker. Still looking to fill that need at middle linebacker. And we just have not found it. Offensive line is better, at least. Still not where we want it to be. The confidence is real low overall. It's real low. Hold on. Does Debo have points? No, he's still only 76 overall. Come on, Debo. What did they you get benched? This is the team. Offensive line. This might be the first time I've ever had them all fit the scheme. And I changed it to multiple power run. So that would happen. A lot of other guys don't fit. But we're rocking the offense like this. I've changed some things. Defensively, this is how we're looking. We need to start performing. We really do. We've got some of the pieces now. It's time to perform. I will see you guys at the midseason mark. Now, I'm not saying that this is even a playoff team yet, but this is more than like a two-win team, I would hope. Okay, well, I didn't expect that. We're 6-1. and one. Of course, I will show you the schedule. There has been no tampering here with forcing any wins. We're just winning games, and we only lost once to the Redskins by six. Very close game. I guess this team's finally ready to play, even without a middle linebacker, even in that spot. Okay. Hey, I'm not complaining. George Kittle will be a free agent at the end of the year. It will be a priority to retain him, as will Richard Sherman, Kyle Juszczyk, Jaquiski Tart, Solomon Thomas, Adrian Colbert, a lot of guys, really. So I re-signed the top four. George Kittle, Richard Sherman, Kyle Juszczyk, Jaquiski Tart. Out right now on Solomon Thomas and Adrian Colbert. Adrian Colbert has more of a chance to get re-signed than Solomon Thomas does. I'm not fully out on Solomon Thomas. He's going to have to show me something stat-wise at the end of the year that makes me say, all right, we'll hold on to you. Right now, I don't think so. All right, we are a first-round by caliber team, 12-4. and four. I don't know, but I'll take it. Jimmy Garoppolo, oh, what a season from Jimmy G. 4,000 passing yards, 29 touchdowns, only three interceptions. Matt Breida was good. Jarek McKinnon was solid as a backup. Receiving George Kittle killed it. Dante Pettis, Debo Samuel was pretty good too, as was Marquise Flash Goodwin. Offensive line, still, like they don't really block that well. Fred Warner. Had a really solid season, like not incredible, but solid. DeForest Buckner was sick, as was Yannick Ngakwe and Rashawn Gary. They all got around 10 sacks. DeForest Buckner, the only one to actually touch double digits. Rashawn Gary, half a sack away. Yannick Ngakwe, a full sack away. And then interceptions, Jacquiski Tart had five. Sherm with four. Marcus Joyner even had three. Force fumbles, not a whole lot per usual. Lamar, he also had a block kick somehow. I'll take that. The 14th ranked offense in the league and the 5th defense. That was probably the difference this year that made our record so good. Le'Veon Bell wins MVP. Jimmy Garoppolo only finishes in 9th. That's that's a shame. NFC Offensive Player of the Year, Le'Veon Bell. Jimmy G at number 6. Defensive Player of the Year, Luke Keekley, no 49ers. Oh, Fred Warner at 6. And Richard Sherman at 9. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Lil Jordan Humphrey. Hook him horns. LaVisca Chenault in here as well. No 49ers. And then defensive rookie of the year is Grant Delpit with the Lions. They've done really well. They've done really, really well. Patty Fisher at number seven. Seems like all the Lions do is draft defensive rookie of the years. Or defensive rookies of the year. There we go. This is the upgraded team. I'd like to see Jimmy Garoppolo be higher than an 84 overall, 85 with confidence. It's like he's just not that good. And the confidence, it plays a small factor. No one on the offensive line is really getting much better. They're getting better, but not much better. Defensively, all we need is a middle linebacker, and this team is going places. Not that we're not places already. I don't think the team's where I want it to be yet, even though we're 12-4. and four. Um, We're going to do another season after this, so I'm not going to hop in any of these games unless we make it to the Super Bowl via simulating, in which I'll hop in for the celebration because we'll make it. As we are going to the Super Bowl. We beat the Cowboys 14-10. And we'll be a Super Bowl team against the Patriots. 49ers, Patriots. Wow. 
The Patriots are only an 83 overall. We'll hop in, and uh, we'll probably hop in in the fourth quarter, depending on what's happening. We're up early. It's going to be 10 nothing. I can't believe we didn't capitalize with another touchdown, but the defense is coming to play. We are up now 13 nothing over the Patriots, who still have yet to get on the board, and we still aren't hopping in. And the Patriots score a field goal before the half as we enter the second. Still up 13-3. Stop giving me moments. It's 20-3, and I think this game is over. We're going to be Super Bowl champions here as night begins to fall. In... Are we in... What is this? Levi Stadium? Are we going to win the Super Bowl at home? And we crush the Patriots as well. 37-3. Why does this feel like... Oh, it's Raymond James. It's in Tampa Bay. My bad. I didn't see the pirate ship. Well, there it is. And I uh, lived in Tampa for a couple years. Been at the stadium a handful of times. Did not recognize it. Not one bit. Guess that pirate ship really means a lot. And the, But all the red colors, I was like, 49ers? Maybe. I don't know who their quarterback is. Would have been a drafted rookie. It looks... Looks almost like Andrew Luck. There's no way the Patriots have Andrew Luck, right? <laughs> it probably says Luck, as in Drew Luck. The Patriots took Drew Luck as Matt Breida is the Super Bowl MVP. And the San Francisco 49ers are Super Bowl champions as we hop in to Season 4 and look to repeat. Let's get it. I will see you guys in the offseason. Solomon Thomas, Adrian Colbert, both here. Adrian Colbert is a good backup. So we're going to sign him to a five-year deal, and he should return. Solomon Thomas, though, he doesn't particularly do anything that well, which is that he was such a good player at Stanford, too. I think it's time to let him go. I don't really, I don't really want to keep him on the team. So he gets a Super Bowl, and we're going to bid him farewell. McCaffrey mixing a lot of good running backs here. David Njoku, Andre Howell, I don't particularly want. Reuben Foster, there it is. <laughs> Welcome back to the Niners. Max contract. You can't f screw up. Hey, hey, watch it with the mouth. You can't screw up in a video game. All right. <laughs> we're signing back Reuben Foster. Welcome back to the San Francisco 49ers, Reuben Foster, to join this now very, very good linebacking core. Very good. I really like every single position. We're in a good spot here. Offensively, I mean, we could use an interior offensive lineman, center guard, receiver. Those are our three positions of need, in my opinion. Dante Pettis up to an 86. And you say receiver, and we have three guys at 80 overall or above. I'd like a true number one. Not sure what would be available, but uh, we're certainly going to find out, aren't we? 2021 draft. I certainly did not load in the correct class, or any class, so... Yikes, is what it is. Oh, did I? I, I actually did it. Good for me. Ooh, Davon Tavian Martin is in this class. He's been great for Washington State. I was actually watching him pretty recently. That'd be a fun draft pick, but not in the first round. Donovan Peoples-Jones is solid, too, out of Michigan. I'm going to go offensive line. It's going to be Wyatt Davis out of Ohio State. 75 overall quick development. That's, like, not that good, but it's going to have to start, probably. I actually just tweeted, like, two hours ago about Dave Ontavian Martin and he's available we're gonna take him it's fitting make sure to follow me on Twitter twitter.com slash Bangalore designs all links are in the description as you guys know yeah, he's all right he's good he's good at Washington State he's a name to keep your eye on in the 2019 2020 college football season I only say 2020 because like some bowl games are in January Ooh, DeMarvion Overshone's in here Texas has a lot of good safeties right now in real life. DeMarvion Overshone, Brandon Jones, 
obviously Caden Stearns, BJ Foster, if you are a Texas Longhorns fan. DeMarvion Overshone is a guy that does not play. But we're going to take him anyway. Hook him horns. Quick development, 70 overall. I will see you guys at the end of the draft. This is the upgraded team for the final season. I guess Davis will not start. These guys are playing with confidence after the Super Bowl. So we're going to keep in the unit that we had. It is a good team. Not a great team, but a good team. I think it's solid. I love the defense. I always like building the defense. And the Niners have a lot of players that I usually would go after. And we brought back Ruben Foster. So we have them. Jaquiski Tart. DeForest Buckner, who I love to get uh, in franchise. He's just a fantastic player in real life. Super underrated. Like, it's such a privilege to be watching interior defensive linemen nowadays with Aaron Donald, Chris Jones, Fletcher Cox, DeForest Buckner. A lot of these guys are super underrated. Obviously, we all know about Aaron Donald, Fletcher Cox, but these guys, Chris Jones, Akeem Hicks, DeForest Buckner, they fly so far under the radar, and they're so good as we are now three and four. Was last season a fluke? Brutal. And the confidence is gone after we've lost some games. Still a good team. And it's a team I expect to make the playoffs. If we don't, it will be a very sad note to end on. I would really like to repeat. Ooh, we did it. No, we went 8-8. Eight eight. We didn't. All right. I didn't see the practice squad players signed. Well, you do hate to see it. We at least managed to win a Super Bowl, and then we had kind of a Super Bowl slump. I will show you guys the fully upgraded team in case you want to compare it to uh, some of yours or other rebuild. I don't know what you want to do, but this is it. Go ahead and make that change. Why would that not be the auto-generated lineup? I don't know. This is it. Solid team. Offensive line is, I think, what really held us back here. Weston Richburg and uh, Davis are a low overall in general. And the receiving core, we never really got any studs. Jimmy G never got higher than an 84 overall. Obviously, I'm not counting with confidence. The defense was solid, though, as I usually make sure that it is. Regression didn't hurt too bad. Richard Sherman stayed at around a 90. So I like that. Marcus Joyner only went down to an 86. It was uh, it was pretty good. But that's going to do it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed the Super Bowl berth and appearance. And, well, the same thing in victory. But I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Take it easy.